This is everything, and I mean everything that you need to know about the centre back position. These two positions right here, whether you're a left footed centre back or a right footed centre back, even in a back three, whichever system you're playing in, this is incredibly important. And once again, if you're not a centre back, you know what to do. Send this to a centre back. Let's get into it. So when your team are keeping possession of the ball, you should always be that option to recycle and reset the play. What on earth does that mean? That means, for example, when your left back has the ball here, you're not just hiding from the ball. You are genuinely showing and demanding for the ball. And that could mean you drop very deep to get the ball and restart the play. Because by standing where you are, first of all, you're limiting the distance. You're limiting the space that your left back has on the ball. Second of all, if this is the opposition striker marking you, the moment you drop deep, this striker is straight away in a predicament. Do they follow you? Do they go to the ball? Do they stay where they are? Because right now, if they stay where they are, you get the ball, then you can recycle, then you can dictate the game from the back. If they get dragged to you, guess what you've done? You've opened up space for your number six, for your opposite side centre-back to get the ball. So one pass out here, then your centre-back can drive with the ball. And once again, if you're the centre-back on this side, when you get the ball from a switch, when your team have switched the ball out to you, your job is to aggressively eat up the space. Literally, eat the space up. Because if your team are building play on this side, with a couple of passes, one, two, three, four, five, your winger gets involved six, even your number 10 gets involved seven, whatever's happening on this side, it requires one pass out to you, then you have so much space. The opposition would have been dragged to this side of the pitch for obvious reasons, because you guys have overloaded that side. The moment you get the ball in space, drive with the ball. So once again, ball carrying, not with your hands, with your feet, by the way. Driving with the ball is so, so important for centre backs, especially if you're on a team that like to play from the back. So. The ball gets switched out to you here. Big touch forward and you just drive forward. Knowing that your next pass has to be a forward one, has to be a positive one. But once again, this comes down to your game IQ, interpretation, understanding of the game. If there's nothing on forward, you're not forcing it. You're doing a Cruyff turn. By that time, your number six would have covered you. Your number eight would be here. Your winger would be further up the pitch. Then you can play the ball and then you can gradually come back to your position, which would be around here. Very, very important. If it's not on to go forward, that Cruyff turn, backwards allows your team once again to restart the play because modern ball playing teams that like to keep the ball will overload this side with a couple of passes switch it out here drive come back then play again then restart it's always transferring the ball here then here then back in the middle then left then right and you need to be the dictator of that so if you're on the left side of the back four here if you're the left center back really control that left side which means you're always moving left or right a couple of yards you're dropping backwards as we just demonstrated in these positions here to force that striker into a predicament and then if you do get the ball can you put your foot on the ball can you relax because there'll be moments in games where you just need to say you know what forget this constant touch play touch play touch play i'm going to reset and go again very very important and one of the best centre backs to watch right now is Lissandro Martinez with the way he controls and dictates the game from the back. Really relaxed, really calm, and he just makes sure that his team are set before he plays that line breaking pass forward. You'll see it a lot. The more you watch Lissandro Martinez, the more you understand what I mean. Where sometimes he just stands with the ball, walks forward, puts his foot on the ball, walks back. The reason why he does that is so whatever rotation that Manchester United want to do happens, then he breaks the line. When you're always playing touch, play, touch, play, touch, play, your team actually don't have time to rotate and get into those positions in possession. So for example, if Mania wants to go a bit higher, Shaw goes higher, Rashford tucks inside, that allows Casemiro a bit of space, Bruno sometimes drops in on the far side. If United want to play in this way, they need literally time to do that, right? That rotation requires, let's say, six, seven seconds. So if you're always doing touch, play, touch, play, touch, play, that rotation physically can't happen. The moment a centre-back like Lissandro Martinez puts his foot on the ball, walks with it, plays a deliberate slow pass, which is another very important aspect, playing slow passes to really draw the opposition towards you, and then you break the line. So sometimes he'll play the slow pass here, get the ball back, then play it back to Onana, drop very deep, get the ball again, by playing slow passes, you're dragging the opposition towards you here, 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 here. And by that time, United would have done that rotation and then that dangerous line-breaking pass 
into that pocket on Mainu's back foot and then Mainu can make things happen further up the pitch. That's just a Manchester United example. So many other teams have those very comfortable ball playing centre backs that allow them to be so dominant in games. Being able to have the courage, composure and confidence to play those slow passes. Very, very important in centre backs nowadays. If you want to especially be that ball playing centre back, the type of centre back that can slow the game down, that can speed up as well. Controlling the game from the back because as we've seen, modern football has changed. Centre backs have the most passes in the game, they have the most touches in the game in teams that dominate possession. So at times, can you drive forward with the ball, then play that slow pass, get the ball back here, then put your foot on the ball, then go backwards to your goalkeeper, then get the ball back, then because you've once again drawn the opposition towards you, you look this way, you look as though you're going to play your left back and then you just zip it around the corner into your centre defensive midfielder's back foot, then he can play forward. Reverse balls, looking that way and wrapping it the other way. They're so, so underrated. They're so important as well. These are the little details that separate you from everyone else in that centre-back position. Being able to look as though, for example, you're going to play your other centre-back here. You're going to play your right centre-back. And then as you've raised your leg back to play them, you drop the shoulder. Then you play your number eight here. So pretending to play this way then a little shift of the ball, then you play that way. And those little details would have brought your players further up the pitch more time on the ball. Because right now, the play is congested. You need to decongest the play. You need to reduce the traffic. So if you're going to play here, it's for a reason. And as you play here, you don't just stand there. Oh, I'm a centre-back, I've done my job. I don't want the ball. No, 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 no. You drop deep, you get the ball again. You always make angles to be that option because the play is in front of you. If the play is in front of you, you can make the best decision possible to be able to exert dominance and to get on the ball just to play, 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 then release your attackers, then they can make things happen further up the pitch. So once you've played the pass here, you don't just stand there, you drop deep, you get the ball back, then you edge forward, just like Lissandro Martinez does. You come forward a bit more, a bit more, then a bit of pressure. Can you play a slow pass, drop off again, get the ball back, drawing plays towards you, then you're looking as though you're going to play your left back or your number eight, then you wrap it around the corner into your number six who can make things happen. Levi Colwell does this really well as well. Calafiori, Bastoni, all of these, especially left-footed centre-backs, do this really well. Very interesting. Most left-footed centre-backs have this ability within them. In terms of right-footed centre-backs, we have Kabasi at Barcelona, who's very good at this as well. He's able to play this cross-field balls on the ground. So sometimes he's looking as though he's going to play, let's say, Jules Kunde, and then he wraps it to the far side pocket. If he's playing on the left centre-back position, he'll look as though he's going to play Araujo here, and then he just finds Pedri in that pocket really further up the pitch, which is so interesting to watch. And those traits in centre-backs are so unique. On the ball, being able to make those sort of passes. So you can be the initiator of the second phase of play. What on earth does that mean? When you play the pass here, you demand it back. So that pass is a slow pass because you want it back. As you get it back, your left back drops deep, you give the ball to your left back, then you drop deeper again, drawing pressure towards you, and then you do a touch, then you play into that pocket, into your number eight, who can make things happen. Let's say your team scores, you are not getting any assists, you're not getting any proper stats, but anyone who knows football and watches you play would know how influential you were within that phase of play. In general, if you can be the player in the first phase of play to play those slow passes, to control the speed of play, to really draw them towards you and then bang, you release your attacking players in a bit of space because you've drawn the players towards you, your attacking players would thank you after the game with a little handshake, maybe they'll buy you something as well, I don't know, but you'd be able to give them more time, more space, more opportunities to express themselves, which is absolutely essential for your team to flourish in attacking areas. Those cross-field diagonal passes are very important as well if you're a centre-back. So, at times, when the opposition have shuffled across, any good team that defend very organised, defend very well, would shuffle across to the side of the ball. And what on earth does that mean? That means the opposite side is free. Can you utilize that to your advantage? Meaning that when you play that pass, when you drop deep and you get the ball, instead of looking back this way and trying to keep it short, in certain moments of the game, can you take a touch out and just hit it in this area here for your opposite side winger? This could become very useful for your teams, once again, in certain moments of the game. Not all the time. You don't want to be that player that constantly hits those long balls, hits those diagonals. As I've just said, you play those short passes, you draw the opposition towards you, and then Maybe it's the pass into the pocket or it's the switch into your far side fullback, into your winger. Having that variation, having that unpredictability about you, 
you'd be absolutely unstoppable as a centre back in possession. You'd become press resistant. You'd have that game understanding, that game IQ to know when to play short, when to play on the side of the ball, and when to just switch it to the far side and let your fullback, let your winger, even your far side number 10, to make things happen on the far side. And when you hit those diagonal passes, you're not really looking to hit it with power. You're looking to sort of float it with a bit of power, not too much. So you're not looking to have a long shot in the air where it's very hard for your opposite winger to control. You're looking at a slight little float in the air so your winger can control it. Yes, the opposition would have shuffled across, but also your far side fullback could be making that overlap, could be making that underlap. Your number 10 could be making that overlap, underlap. So you want to give your winger the best possible opportunity of actually controlling the ball. If you just smash it across thinking, yeah, I'm going to hit that diagonal, bang. How is he meant to control it? What if it hits his chest, he tries to head it to try and keep it in play. So you want to give your winger or your fullback the best opportunity. A slight little float with a bit of power. So not too slow, but not too fast. You're floating it into this area. Maybe your fullback is controlling it and he's able to take it in his stride. And that comes down to your technical ability as a centre back. And now when you're actually defending, when you don't have the ball, your positioning is the most important aspect. When the centre back on your side has the ball, you should be focusing on whatever movement that the winger does. The striker might come to your side. The opposite winger might even come to your side. The number 10 might make runs in behind. So you and your partner at centre-back need to make sure that you're compact. You're bringing your far side fullback in to make a very compact shape and then it's down to your anticipation. If you can see that this centre-back has rolled the ball out and is about to play that long ball, you're ready to drop. You're not waiting for the ball to go in the air and then you're dropping because that split second could give this number nine, this number 11, this number seven, number 10 opportunities to go in behind and cause problems. So the moment you see the centre back roll the ball out and they're about to hit it long, you've already dropped. So when the ball's in the air, you'll be somewhere here. Can you head it in these wide areas? Can you potentially even have the composure? We've seen some centre backs do it where they head it into their centre defensive midfielder's chest who can bring it down and then they can play. It can happen, but ideally, you'd want to head it out into these wide areas, let your fullback, let their winger or their fullback and your winger compete for that second ball there. Anticipation, reading of the game, reading of the opponent's body position, angles, hips, eyes, anything and everything that will help you gain that advantage. And then if this centre-back gives the ball to this centre-back here, you guys would have shuffled across like that and then you're just once again looking at this centre-back's next pass. Is it a roll out for a long ball? Because if that's the case, if it's a diagonal pass here, you're already dropping somewhere here with your other centre-back shuffling across. You're ready to win that aerial duel. You're ready to head the ball here, head the ball out there, just compete in the air with your other centre-back supporting you and your other full-back coming across like that, being very compact. But it all starts from anticipation. If you do not anticipate, if you're reactive instead of proactive, this ball could go over the top, the striker could end up controlling it, or the winger could end up getting onto it, and then there's problems. There's problems. You've just been beaten with just a long ball in behind. Because your job, after all we've discussed in terms of ball playing and in possession principles, when you don't have the ball, you're a centre back, you're the defender. Yes, your goalkeeper's there. Your job is to make your goalkeeper's life as easy as possible and your teammates around you as well. So, anticipating, reading the game, sensing different types of movement. So, if the number six has the ball here, if this number 10 has dropped in, maybe you follow and then the other one covers. So this applies to any centre-back on any side of the pitch. If this number 10 drops in, maybe you can pass him on to your number six. It just depends on the game state. At times you'd be dragged in, which is fine, but then the other centre-back would have to shuffle across and so would the full-backs as well. These aspects require communication, reading of the game and feeling the game. What is the game telling you? Do I need to track this number 10 in? Can I pass this number 10 onto my number six and maintain my position? If the ball comes out to this winger here, where am I? It's a 1v1 with my fullback, but am I in close proximity to make sure if my fullback gets beaten, now I am there, then my fullback can come into this area. So you're not on a flat line with your fullback because if this winger beats your fullback, that's it, they're in behind. You're sort of on a diagonal somewhere here. So if this fullback gets beaten, you're there. You really aggressively press the ball. You're not necessarily putting a foot in because if this winger is very skillful and very flashy, they'd be able to use that to their advantage. 
you're really delaying, you're jockeying, waiting for your moment, delaying the play so that your fullback who's just been beaten can get back into position. Your number 10, your number 11, they're all sprinting back to make sure that this winger cannot cause any problems. And even if this fullback makes a dangerous underlapping run, an overlapping run, you guys have enough cover because you slowed the game down. You slowed this player down, which allows your team to retreat and recover. So that's it for today's everything that you need to know. It was about the centre back. The next one will be about the full back, the left back and the right back. And all the principles that I discussed within the full back would apply to wing backs as well. So stay tuned for that one. But until next time, peace.